This is the BYD Addo 3. It's the second cheapest electric car that you can buy brand new here in Australia. And well, you're gonna be shocked at how good this car is for the price. I know I was shocked as well. Not sponsored content, just impressive that for about $48,500 drive away, this Addo 3 extended range is actually really quite good. Now I'm gonna give you a full review of this car today. We'll look at the interior, the technology, the back seat and the boot, and we'll take a drive in the BYD Addo 3 to see how it suits Australian roads. I'll also let you know exactly how much range this car has because we've tested that scientifically as well. We're gonna kick off today though with the three best things and the three worst things about the 2023 BYD Addo 3, an electric car you might be considering. Before we get started, hit subscribe and the notification bell. The best thing about the Addo 3 is the price, $48,500 drive away or thereabouts here in New South Wales before incentives for the extended range, promising around 420 kilometers of range. But I'll tell you how much it actually gets shortly. A bit like the German supermarket Aldi, this Chinese made BYD shows that cheap doesn't have to be nasty. Instead, it can mean just a little bit generic, but almost as good as mainstream rivals. The range of the BYD Addo 3 is more than acceptable for what you're being asked to pay for. The extended range might have a WLTP claim of 420 kilometers, but in the real world, we were able to get 366 kilometers on the highway and approximately double what you'd get from a Mini Cooper SE that costs 50% more than this vehicle. Plus, handily, the BYD also gives you much longer range in the real world than the MG ZS EV that's closest to it in price. One of the best parts of the BYD Atto 3 is that this vehicle is actually remarkably good to drive and that isn't always the case for affordable electric cars or even electric cars generally. They often ride really poorly, but the Atto 3 simply doesn't. It actually has very comfortable ride quality, partially because it has smaller alloy wheels and chunkier tires, helping it to soak up bumps that are common here in Australia. The steering is acceptable. The body control is actually reasonably good. You can punt it down a country road with decent confidence. Not something we've been able to say about the MG ZS EV in the past. Now, on a wet day like this, there is a bit of a problem with traction because the motor is relatively powerful. But that motor is smooth, refined, and quiet. And overall, this car is not just easy to drive, it's actually quite satisfying to drive as well. While the dynamics are overall pretty good, there's one weak spot, and that's the Addo 3's tires. They're actually fine in the dry, but here in the wet, you try and put the power down, and the car really scrabbles for grip. Now, this isn't a problem which is necessarily common to Chinese-made tires. It's simply that a vehicle with significant torque, like the Addo 3, really needs a premium tire in order to be able to find traction in wet conditions like this. So if I was buying this car, the first thing I do is take it down to my local tire shop and get a good quality Continental or Michelin, Bridgestone, Pirelli, that sort of tire put on it. Spend a little bit of money and it makes the car better to drive. The interior is certainly interesting to look at and the material quality is good too, but the technology is a little bit lacking. There are elements to the software which feel generic, like a cheap Android tablet you might pick up on Wish or something, but there's also no modern smartphone integration. There's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in this car. Now there's been on and off promises from BYD that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will be added to the vehicle in time, but Australian distributor EV Direct has told me that they simply won't. So who knows what's going on? Either way, this car deserves and needs modern smartphone integration. But BYD makes you service the Addo 3 too frequently, every year and at a cost of almost $1,400 over the first five years. For a dedicated EV with few moving parts, that strikes us as rather expensive. Jumping inside the BYD Addo 3, you'll be astonished by the interior. Certainly the design won't be to everybody's tastes and BYD tells us that this sinewy sort of pattern throughout the cabin is actually modeled on human muscle tissue, which is original to say the least. And the color combination of navy, blue, and white may be too out there for some, but I kind of, over the week, have embraced the weirdness. But while the design is, I guess, rather subjective, what is really good about the cabin of the BYD Addo 3 is the level of finish. This car doesn't feel like a cheap piece of rubbish inside, anything but. Instead, most surfaces are covered in soft materials, making this vehicle feel 
up to its price of $48,500 drive away if it was a combustion vehicle, and certainly much nicer inside than other entry-level electric cars that are on sale in Australia or are planned for release soon. This thing actually feels really up to scratch, and I think you'll be impressed. Now, looking forward at the dash, we've got this interesting looking steering wheel. There's a lot going on. That's a recurring theme in the interior of the Addo 3, but it feels decent in the hand. I think it's vinyl. It doesn't feel like real leather, but that's okay. Then we look at a small screen here, very similar to the one in the Volkswagen ID3 and ID range, but you get your, your speed, your um, range prediction, which is totally inaccurate, by the way. It's incredibly optimistic, the range prediction. The ranges I've given you are correct though. State of charge, trip computer, and a power meter, a few other bits and bobs of info are visible through this screen too. But this screen over here, 12.8 inches in size, this is the real party piece of the Addo 3's interior, because as you can see at the moment, it's in a portrait orientation, but at the push of a button, you can make it go landscape, which is really cool. And you can imagine that being quite useful if the car had integrated navigation, but it doesn't nor does it have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which is a big miss for a new car in 2022. Now, Australian distributor EV Direct says that BYD's own software is just as good as Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but that is completely false because the software feels a little bit generic. It's at least responsive and quick and easy enough to navigate around, but settings menus are sort of buried in illogical places. As I said, there's no navigation. So if you want to navigate somewhere in this car, you've got to just have your phone on a mount on the windscreen or something like it's 2008. That should have been fixed before deliveries of the car commenced here in Australia. And it may still be fixed if BYD deems it the right decision to give the car Apple CarPlay and Android Auto at a later date. Still, one great thing about the system is that the car has a Dirac premium stereo, which sounds very decent, far better than the stereos in other EVs that you would get at this price. So if you like your music, you'll enjoy the stereo or perhaps a, a song of your own making from the guitar strings that serve as, I guess, little barriers for the door bins. So that's something a little bit different. This car's quirky, it's weird. It feels French, actually. It's no bad thing. Down here, we've got these sinewy vents for the climate control. The climate control system feels up to scratch, at least at the moment, but this week hasn't breached 20 degrees in Sydney, so we don't know what it's like in the heat of summer here in Australia. It's quite practical though. We've got wireless charging as standard, big cup holders, a really deep bin here between the seats, and a big storage place here because the, the floor is flat. This is a dedicated EV platform. It's not like a Hyundai Kona Electric, which is a converted combustion car. The seats themselves are reasonably comfortable, particularly in the backrest. The seat base is a little low and you can't actually change the thigh adjustment, but the seats do have electric adjustment, which is pretty cool. And after a few hours, I got out of the car feeling fine, relaxed enough in these chairs. But a final word on the interior, and that's at the spec level, is very generous for the money. We've got an opening sunroof here. The tech is obviously quite cool, quite interesting. Electric adjustment for the seats, wireless charging. Find me another EV that's as well equipped as this car for the money. The Addo 3 is actually usable to transport five adults, which is a real shock. And it doesn't even have a similar problem to lots of other dedicated EVs where the floor is too high. As you can see here, my legs are supported by the seat base. I've got sufficient headroom, I'm six feet tall. Legroom is really good behind my own driving position. And because of that flat floor, you could actually get someone on this center seat as long as they weren't too tall, because it's a slight hump, but even that is a fairly minor issue. We've even got stuff like more air vents back here, additional USB-C ports, lots of pockets on the back of the seat, soft materials on the rear doors. I mean, BYD is actually just schooling mainstream manufacturers with the quality and the level of amenity in the back seat of this car. It's a real surprise and a pleasant one at that. We've also got a flip down armrest here on the seat back. Nice view out of the opening panoramic sunroof, big windows. Somebody asked, in our call out for questions about this car, whether the back windows go all the way down. Not quite, but further than something like a Toyota CHR, I guess, which is quite good. And you may have noticed these funky controls here to open the door. Again, another quirky and weird design element, but you learn how to use them quite quickly. You'll also find that you can get a couple of baby seats into the back of the Addo 3 without too much of an issue because the wheelbase of the car is long and so the interior space is decent. But still, coming around to the rear angle of the Addo 3, you find perhaps the most odd and slightly embarrassing element on the vehicle, and that's that BYD, it stands for Build Your Dreams, which is just not quite right. 
in how we conceive of marketing in the West, I guess. And this is written out on the back of the car, build your dreams. So as well as taking the car to the tire shop, first thing out of the dealership, I'd probably get my hair dryer and a bit of tooth floss and get rid of that because the rest of the rear end is handsome enough, particularly in this blue color. And for our money, we also get a power tailgate, which is a really nice feature at uh, this end of the market. And that opens up to reveal a deep boot, one that's reasonably efficient and practical. We've done our soccer ball test on it to see how this compares to other small SUVs. You'll also find you get a nice hard case for your charging cables and underneath the boot floor, no spare wheel, unfortunately, just a goo kit, which will limit the appeal of the car in country Australia. But if you're mainly buying it as a runabout or to take on major highways, that probably won't be too much of an issue. Charging the Addo 3 can be done at up to 80 kilowatts officially, though we did see speeds of approximately 90 kilowatt peak while charging the vehicle ourselves and independently. Now you have a 60.4 kilowatt hour LFP battery in this car. Being LFP in chemistry, you can actually charge this vehicle to 100% all the time with very minimal degradation. It's better than lithium ion in that way. And what will it cost to charge this vehicle? Well, at home, it'd cost you around $15 to go from flat to full with current energy prices. However, if you charge it on, say, the ChargeFox Ultra Rapid Network, which costs 60 cents per kilowatt hour, you're going to be looking at a charge of closer to $35 to top up this vehicle. Of course, few people charge from completely dead to completely full, so your actual costs will tend to vary. With the vehicle, there is a five-year warranty and a longer warranty than that for the high voltage components. Of course, depreciation is hard to speak about given this is a new brand, though BYD promised they have many, many orders for this car, so we should see quite a few of them on the road here in Australia. So what about driving the BYD at 03? The first thing that comes to my mind is that this thing is actually pretty good to drive, and that was honestly a shock. BYD is a no-name brand here in Australia, but it's likely that we're gonna be hearing a lot more about it soon. And overseas, particularly in China, BYD has been a big deal for a long time. So it's not a brand new company, nor is the Addo 3 its first ever car. Australia might be receiving this as the first BYD that you've ever heard of, but it's just the latest in a long line of model progression at the Chinese company. And you can tell that because this vehicle doesn't feel like a first effort. Instead, it feels like a car that's received reasonable attention at the proving ground. There are still some flaws in the dynamics of the vehicle, but there are far fewer flaws in the way the Atto 3 drives than a vehicle like the MG ZS EV, or even some cars from mainstream brands like the Mitsubishi ASX. Certainly the Atto 3 is better to drive than that car, and that's a real credit to BYD. But what are we dealing with mechanically? Well, we've got a single electric motor on this vehicle mounted on the front axle. So the Addo 3 is front wheel drive. And that's the case for a lot of affordable electric cars. The motor makes 150 kilowatts of power, which is plenty, and 310 Newton meters of torque. So it's about as muscular as a decently sized four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. And that's the way it feels getting down the road. The Addo 3 is nippy, though the throttle can be quite doughy in the car's eco mode that helps you extract maximum range. Put it in sport though, and this car has excellent throttle response and it's actually remarkably quick and agile and fast to drive on a country road. But leave it in eco, accept the doughy throttle response and you'll be able to extract half decent range out of the car. The consumption is really line ball with most rivals, line ball with a Tesla, Model Y on the highway, if not quite as efficient in town. Although something like a Hyundai Kona Electric is more efficient again, and slightly better to drive when it comes to ride and handling. The Addo 3 is very comfortable. The ride quality is soft and cushy, and I think most Australians who live in cities with potholes are gonna appreciate that BYD have made the Addo 3 comfortable rather than sporty. And indeed, on a country road, you actually can get this vehicle down the road quickly once you just learn to balance the body control, which just slightly tips the car over as you turn into a corner, but then it settles on its outside wheels nicely. And in the dry, traction and grip levels are high, but in the wet, the Atlas tires fitted to this car are not the best. And as I said at the start, the first thing I'd do is get decent tires fitted to the vehicle to eliminate that problem. Particularly when the motor has so much torque, the car just scrabbles for grip from time to time. 
The steering also feels a little bit artificial, just, just odd sort of steering feel. Like any car, you get used to it quite quickly. But particularly when you're driving fast and you turn into a corner, the steering feels a little bit digital and disconnected to the front wheels. But it's by no means unlivable. In fact, it's largely fine. Refinement is also good inside this car. The cabin is quiet and the stereo, as I was mentioning, is very good. So you can turn that up and listen to your music as well. Even the safety features are well calibrated. The adaptive cruise control is smooth. And while the lane keep assist is too interventionist and annoying at low speed, so I found myself turning it off, you can turn just the automated steering back on on the highway without lane keep assist, holding the car in the center of the lane. And that works really well, letting the car take over those functions from time to time when you're on the highway, but without annoying lane keep assist at lower speeds. However, the steering wheel is not capacitive. So when you're using lane centering on the highway, you do have to occasionally wobble the steering wheel to remind the car that you're still here and still awake. There's also incredibly clear cameras on this car. Some of the best reversing cameras I've ever seen on any test chasing cars is done. This should be something that's simple. Camera technology is so cheap. So why do so many cars still have awfully grainy reversing cameras? The Addo 3 does not. It also does not currently have an ANCAP crash rating, however. BYD says it's comfortable that it will get a five-star rating, but until that actually happens, we just don't know. So those are my opinions of the new BYD Addo 3. It's simply hard to conclude this review with anything other than the opinion that this car is exceptionally good value for money. Is it the best small SUV on the market? No. Is it the longest range EV on the market? No. Is it the cheapest? Almost, second cheapest. Point is, for the spend that you are asked to cough up here, the Addo 3 is as good as it gets right now at the affordable end of the EV segment in Australia. And that is a massive achievement for a brand that has barely existed on this continent until now. So it certainly makes us wonder what the next gen EVs from BYD will be like. We know that they're coming out with a Tesla Model 3 sports sedan competitor in the coming year or two here in Australia. So we're excited to drive that vehicle, but for now, if what you want is a cheap EV, I'd probably be signing up to buy an Auto 3. And I'm just as shocked as you are. Keen to know your views down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. Any questions, I'm happy to answer them down there. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you won't miss our detailed, fully independent reviews. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.